So, Frozen. I know it's been massively overhyped, but that's calmed down a bit by now. And believe it or not, I put all 59 of these movies in a jar and drew this one at random. It was determined to be first. So sit back, relax, and enjoy some Frozen trivia. Frozen is the 53rd entry in what is known as the Walt Disney Animation Studios canon. The movie was co-directed by Chris Buck and Jennifer Lee, and it premiered at the El Capitan Theatre in Hollywood on November 9th, 2013. It's common knowledge that Frozen flopped hard at the box office, earning only $1.2 billion worldwide. It was the highest grossing film of 2013 and became the highest grossing animated film ever at the time, dethroning Toy Story 3. As of March 2021, Frozen is the 16th highest grossing film ever worldwide. It was 5th highest at its peak. Frozen 2 has since surpassed it. But neither Frozen movie currently holds the title for highest grossing animated or musical film. No, that honor? It goes to something else. Frozen may have won an award or two. Most notably, the film won two Academy Awards, one for Best Animated Feature and one for Best Original Song. Anyone want to guess which one? Let it go, let it go. The Academy Award for Best Animated Feature didn't exist until 2001 when Somebody. Shrek won. So Frozen was actually the first Walt Disney Animation Studios film to win it. Frozen was also the studio's first film to win Best Animated Feature at the Golden Globes. The category didn't exist at this ceremony until 2006 when Cars won, deservedly, and actually a Pixar film won every year since then except for one time up until Frozen. In 2011, The Adventures of Tintin snagged the award, robbing the universally loved Cars 2. Let's talk about music. The songs in Frozen were written by married couple Bobby Lopez and Kristen Anderson Lopez. They worked for Disney previously, writing songs for the studio's 2011 release, Winnie the Pooh. Kristen also voiced Kanga in this movie. It's Kanga! No, 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 no. How about we celebrate with silence? The songs are extremely integral to Frozen as a whole, and there's one in particular that changed pretty much the entire narrative of the story. You already know who it is! Let it go! Let it go! Let It Go helped decide story-wise that Elsa was not a villain. In older drafts of the story, villainous plot points for Elsa originally included her kidnapping Anna from her wedding, freezing her heart on purpose, and sending an army of evil snowmen into town. Oh no! It's the first song from a Disney animated musical to reach the top 10 Billboard Hot 100 since Colors of the Wind in 1995, making the song Adina Menzel's first single to reach the top 10. It also makes her the first Tony Award winner for acting to ever reach the top 10. <laughs> Do You Wanna Build a Snowman was almost cut due to an opening song already existing with Frozen Heart. It also made the creators want to kill themselves. Oh my god! Oh Anna's goofiness ultimately saved the song. And for the first time in forever, there was originally a lyric, I hope that I don't vomit in his face. But because Disney didn't want a bodily fluid lyric in the song, they had to change it. You know, like a verp. A what? Vomit and a burp together, and you can taste it, and it's just like rising up. Maybe it's a princess movie thing, although Vanellope is a princess. Anyways, it was Bobby and Kristen's daughter, Katie, who came up with a replacement lyric, I want to stuff some chocolate in my face. Love is an Open Door is the first time a Disney princess sings a duet with the villain, although Anna didn't know Han's true nature at the time. Snake. If you watch Arrested Development, you may have recognized the line, We finish each other's sandwiches. It's like we finish each other's sandwiches. Bobby and Kristen swear it occurred spontaneously, but they did try replacing the lyric with sausages and sauerkraut, but neither sounded right. We finish each other's senses. <laughs> well, I was going to say sandwiches, but whatever. Oh, and I'm not going to talk about Fixer Upper because I hate it. We're not saying you can change him, cause people don't really change. Bobby and Kristen were still doing rewrites pretty close to the set release date, and Kristen has joked that they could have worked as birthday party clowns if the project failed and annihilated their entire careers. They're good. 
Healing is a Scandinavian herding call technique which uses a high flute-like sounding voice and it was used in the film to represent Elsa's fear. Singer and Norwegian film composer Christine Howes was asked to perform the Kjuling for the movie, as she is one of the only authentic herd callers in the world. She learned the technique while herding goats in the Norwegian mountains as a child. When looking for location inspiration for Frozen, the Danish-themed city Solvang near LA was visited but ultimately we know they went with Norway. Norwegia. Solvang has a replica of the Little Mermaid statue in Copenhagen, as well as a bust of Hans Christian Andersen. Some of the Disney team went to Norway for research, and something they learned about was rosemalling. The word means decorative painting, and it's a traditional form of decorative folk art that originated in the rural valleys of Norway. It's very present throughout the movie, as even Elsa's ice powers incorporate rosemalling. If Frozen had been traditionally animated, the clothing would have been a nightmare. So many details would probably break the budget. Part of me wishes the movie was hand-drawn because the concept art is gorgeous. Keeping the patterns from crawling over the characters would have rivaled keeping all the spots in place in 101 Dalmatians. Animators and special effects artists took trips specifically to research ice and snow. One group went to Jackson Hole, Wyoming, Yeehaw. where animators had to try on long, heavy skirts to experience how the characters would move in snow. Another group of lighting and arts teams was sent to Quebec City during the Winter Carnival. There was an ice hotel, and they spent time studying how light reflects and refracts on snow and ice. Effects groups had lectures on snow and ice from Dr. Snow himself, Kenneth Libricht. A snow simulator software was created for the movie, which they ended up calling Matterhorn. Permanecer sentados, por favor. For the sound design, artists received daily deliveries of 50 pounds of snow and ice to work with. <sighs> Elsa's footsteps on her ice palace floor were actually created including a mix of wine glasses and metal knives on ice. Hello? It was actually Kristen Bell, voice of Anna, who came up with what became like Anna's unofficial catchphrase. Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? Kristoff even ends up saying it. Wait, what? Kristen Bell, Edina Menzel, and Santino Fontana had all auditioned for Tangled. And now for one of my favorite segments, reoccurring Disney voice actors. Yeah! Alan Tudyk, who played the Duke of Wesselton in Frozen, has become a staple in Disney voice acting during the revival. Some of his other roles include King Candy slash Turbo in Wreck-It Ralph, Alistair Cray in Big Hero 6, Duke Weaselton in Zootopia, which is a reference to his Frozen character, Hey Hey in Moana, Knows More in Ralph Breaks the Internet, a handful of minor characters in Frozen 2, and Tuk Tuk in Raya and the Last Dragon. I, I went to Julia. There's also Jesse Cordy, who voiced a Spanish dignitary in Frozen. Previously, he voiced Mr. Manchus in Zootopia and LeFou in Beauty and the Beast. On a similar note, Chris Williams, who voiced Oaken, was one of the co-directors on the next film from the studio, Big Hero 6. He also co-directed Bolt. <laughs> Jennifer Lee provided the voice for Anna and Elsa's mother in Frozen. The role of Queen Aduna was taken over by Evan Rachel Wood in Frozen 2. One of my favorite things in the entire world is Disneyland, and Disney parks in general. So now I want to take a look at where Frozen has appeared and been incorporated into the Disney parks around the world. Due to Frozen's massive popularity, it has unsurprisingly appeared all over the parks, so I'll just be covering the major stuff. Frozen Live at the Hyperion is a Broadway-style stage show performed at Disney California Adventure in Disneyland Resort. It replaced Aladdin and Musical Spectacular in May 2016. The Frozen show closed indefinitely in March 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. A lot. Also in DCA, in the animation building is the character close-up where guests can meet Anna and Elsa. I am actually a little annoyed with this one because they took over Ursula's Grotto and they haven't given it back. Body language. DCA also used to host a Frozen fun event, which included things like Olaf's Snowfest and Wandering Oaken's Trading Post. Most of the parks have also hosted a Frozen sing-along celebration, which is still running in Disney's Hollywood Studios at Walt Disney World and at Shanghai Disneyland. In Epcot at Walt Disney World in the Norway Pavilion, the Maelstrom attraction was replaced in 2016 by a new Frozen dark ride called Frozen Ever After. 
Arendelle World of Frozen is an upcoming Frozen themed land being developed at Hong Kong Disneyland. Pretty much the same thing is being developed at Tokyo Disney Sea as part of the Fantasy Springs expansion. I hope you're hungry because it's time for a big helping of fun fact nuggets and easter eggs. Rapunzel and Eugene make a cameo during For the First Time in Forever. Hiram Osmond, the supervising animator for Olaf, is actually Donny Osmond's nephew, and he has said that there is a nod to his uncle in the song Love is an Open Door. The scene where the men are arguing over how to stack the firewood down is, drier. Back up. is a reference to a nationwide Norwegian debate. Author Lars Midding released a best-selling book called Helved, which spawned a 12-hour television program. A majority of the program featured a fire burning with firewood stacked next to it. Why are you running? It was that stack of wood that caused viewers to write in and respond about which way they thought the wood should be stacked, thus sparking an argument which is now part of Norwegian culture. Frozen was actually not the most torrented movie of 2014. It fell second place to The Wolf of Wall Street. Maybe it would have been first if more six-year-olds knew how to torrent. <laughs> Losers. At the end of the movie, it was originally supposed to be Kristoff who punched Hans, but it was definitely more satisfying when Anna did it. Absolute girl boss moment. At the end of the movie, after Anna is unfrozen, the white streak that had been present in her hair for years has finally disappeared. Wandering Oaken got his name because Jennifer Lee entered the words naked Norwegians into an anagram generator and that was one of the results. Mm -hmm. Elsa's breath does not actually show. Hans it does. When Anna is freezing, hers doesn't show either. The official crest of Arendelle is a crocus. It's a flower that is a symbol of rebirth and spring. In colder regions, crocuses burst forth while snow is still on the ground. The horses in the movie are Norwegian fjord horses. The actual breed is quite short, so they made them taller. They're known for the distinct dark strip running through the center of their manes. Jennifer Lee confirmed in a tweet that Hans's horse is named Citron. Well, well, life gives you lemons. There's speculation that the mountaintop where Elsa's ice castle is was based from Black Tusk Mountain in Whistler, British Columbia, Canada. Elsa building her ice castle took nine months to animate. You could literally grow a human being in the same amount of time. Ah. Elsa's hair contains 420,000 computer-generated strands, while the average number for a real human is 100,000. Yes, queen! She has more strands of hair than even the hair queen herself, Miss Punzi. The hairstylist Danilo was contacted to help with Elsa's hair in the movie. He is styled for the likes of Gwen Stefani, Lady Gaga, Sorry. and Katy Perry. I know, wig, I feel that- He says Elsa's pompadour represents the silhouette of a crown, which is fitting because she tossed hers away. Anna and Elsa were not always sisters in the film's story. No one even knows who actually came up with the sisters idea, but it certainly changed everything. <laughs> Olaf was originally Elsa's sidekick, and an obnoxious and sort of mean one at that. Jennifer Lee has said that she saw a screening before she was involved with the project, and every time Olaf appeared on screen, she wrote in her notes, Kill the f***ing snowman. I've been impaled. So fortunately, they improved his character. Although, I'm sure there are still many people who would love to kill the snowman. Frozen got so hugely popular that it became its own franchise, so Anna and Elsa are only marketed within that and not within the actual official Disney princess lineup. Get out, and with that, we come to the end. Thanks for joining for the very first episode of Walt Disney Animation Studios Trivia. I'm planning to cover all 59 films in the canon, ordered to be selected by random draw. Disney animation is one of my biggest passions, so if you love it too, look out for more videos like this coming soon. See you next time!